Hello, this is James Mahoney, writer and filmmaker. Thanks for checking out episode two of my new uh, filmmaking uh, vlog, uh, I Filmmaker. Um, as I mentioned in the previous uh, video, the uh, actual episodes will be broken up into three parts. Uh, the first part will be either about my uh, personal projects, uh, past, present, or future film uh, or video. And the second part will be reviews of either uh, film or show or shows. And the third part will be me talking about either story or story scope, character or character development. Um, let's go ahead and get started. In 1999, I stepped away from a job I'd been at eight and a half years. And uh, it was a corporate America. I was in sales for six of that, six and a half of that. I was doing well, but my, I, all through my 20s, I wanted to pursue filmmaking and I wasn't. Um, and my life shifted when I turned 30 and I decided uh, several months later to walk away from the good paying corporate job and uh, pursue filmmaking. I moved to uh, Eugene, Oregon. I'm in Southern California, but I moved to Eugene, Oregon where my brother was. I wanted to reconnect with him. I had, uh, he'd been living in uh, Oregon and Hawaii uh, with his wife. And um, so I reconnected with him, bought a video camera, started working on a bunch of experimental film stuff. Um, but moving ahead a little bit, so I moved there in 99, and at the end of 2000, I, I moved back to California. But in 2002, uh, my brother was uh, talking to me how he really wanted me to move up there, and we can run and told him, you know, I, I, I don't want to just do experimental filmmaking, I want to do a short film. He said, okay, yeah, I move up here, so he wanted me to move up there uh, for us to work on short films together. I got up there. Uh, it was diff it was after 9-11 and um, just after 9-11 and really hard to get a job and everything. So it was really a struggle being there at that time uh, financially. I couldn't get work. And um, anyway, uh, so I wanted to work on videos with him and the reality of my brother was having issues in his personal life and he really just wasn't available to make films. So I was out of frustration. I, sh I wrote a short five minute short film, called him up and just said, hey, can I borrow you for an hour? So I went over there with the intention of filming some this script that I had just written in an hour. It ended up being like an hour and a half or whatever. Um, it was called If Not Now. It was about two brothers. It was about, uh, it's basically about, um, um, you know, one brother has the, the, the kids and, and working and has not really pursuing his dreams. And the other brother's kind of giving him a hard time for walking away from his dreams. Um, the actual short film, the link of it is gonna be in underneath this video. So I would recommend actually watching a short film first before you watch this um, because I'm going to be commenting on it and stopping, maybe stopping and starting it and I don't want to distract from the overall uh, vibe or message or anything like that or story. Uh, so like I said, I recommend just clicking that link down below. It's only five minutes long. Check out the actual short film and then we will watch it together and, um, and I will be commenting on it. All right. So um let's do this i was hoping to get my brother in here to watch uh, watch this with me uh, it'd be great because he's in this We're, we both act in this um because i just didn't have any actors um also it's, it's me my brother the person that's really helping me also filming it is the girl i was with at the time so the three of us kind of did this anyway i'm hoping that you uh, guys uh, click the link below and watch the film before i do this because i'm just going to maybe stopping and going okay just uh, just a little more information so yeah we filmed this like an hour and a half um the, the camera I had was a Sony and it was, um, I, mean, I was using high eight video, uh, so it wasn't digital. Um, I literally had to, oh, well, let me let's just stay with that. Okay, so um, when, I, when I videotaped it, um, the camera just happened to be a Sony and happened to have really good sound. So I think the sound is actually good in this. Um, but the video footage, I had to shoot things and that was the only shot I had. There was, and then I had to edit it all together, use what I had. So there's points where the camera moves or whatever. But overall, they thought they all of them saw this footage and thought, no way am I going to be able to make anything out of it. But after eight to ten hours of editing, I was able to, I feel, deliver the message and people liked it. And I got into a film festival. Let's go ahead and just watch it um, and uh, just give it a go. Oh, yeah. One other thing was is that so I filmed this in high eight video. And then when I when I edited it together, then I had to like transfer it into digital. So it lost quality, which may have added to the overall feeling. But without further ado. From 2000, my first and only short film, yeah, if not now. <coughs> Honey, are you awake? We haven't eaten yet. <coughs> 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 
Oh, your sister's here? Come on. Get out. Get on. Get out of there. Oh, are you going to drink my last soda? Yeah. It's 7 in the morning. Right, right. See you later. Did you tell her you love her? Leave me alone again. I'm just trying to make a point. Consider it made. This car, is that like a European? Case movie. Even it's black and white, but still the grayness of Oregon. Usually, a lot of grayness. The, the thing lent to it. So, have you picked up the video camera lately? Don't start. All I'm saying is, you have too much talent to waste. I'm yelling at you! Jesus, Taylor, I'm just trying to... Those little uh, shots, like when he's starting the car back up, getting those little shots, it adds so much dimension. Uh, maybe it's just a, a given, but as a filmmaker, like at some point he turned on the defroster and I'm like, you, we need to film that because otherwise the windows are foggy, the windows are clear. So you'll see it's coming up. <clears throat> i help you out. Well, you're not. So I suggest you shut it. Whatever. All right then. Yeah. I should also say, and I don't think I mentioned this earlier in the video, he'd never seen the script before. My brother's, I mean, I think he's a great actor. He's a driver. I, uh, I, I mean, I'm okay. I, I just, I can kind of get through. But, but he's a great actor, I think. I just literally, we fed him the lines right before the shot. So he'd never seen the script. So that's how all of this shot. We just read the lines. We didn't memorize anything. So. <clears throat> and reach all the dreams of, of being a filmmaker. Just untenable. All right. What do you mean, whatever? I can't get you to shut up and now it's just, oh, whatever. Oh, but you did get me to shut up. That's the point, right? And the problem is that you're a dreamer and I'm a damn realist. And you always were a dreamer. We're all gonna die one day. Isn't death real enough for you? Don't get all extreme on me. Or this conversation is over. Aren't you the one that started out with the extremes? I'm a dreamer, you're a realist. That's crap. I just never gave up my dreams. That's it, I'm done. I gotta go. Pick me up at eight. Now I'm not used to this car, so I'm kind of like, I caught this car, so like when I back out of here, <laughs> I'm keeping the gas going because I don't want it to die. Hey! I don't work, it's a holiday. You're a zombie, dude. Brothers is always fun too. They've been filmed with brothers. Brother characters are real brothers. You get like a, a certain kind of vibe. I'm sorry, James. You just don't understand. You never did. Never did. So. Same time Tuesday. Sounds good. Say hey to the kids and Kate. That shot of my brother walking up and say, so same time Tuesday. It was actually shot before we even went on the drive, which is, yeah, not really a big deal, but it's 
just thought I'd throw that out there. <clears throat> this whole moment here reminds me of like Goodwill Hunting or something. Uh, just his soul, his whole energy and this, this little local filming thing. Um, you know, I'm gonna have to close the door. Knock. Hi, what happened? Why did something have to happen? Oh, I was just wondering why you were home. It's a holiday. We're closed. I'm gonna take a nap. James says hi. James, your brother's dead. Hey, honey, James is here. Ready to go? And that's it. He gets a second chance if, to uh, actually do films with his brother. If you know, the irony um, was that months later, I was in a hospital with an issue, and it caused me to have to step away from filmmaking for quite some time. So I didn't die, but I did uh, stop making films for a while. Um, so that's kind of a strange irony, but that's life. Thanks for hanging in there and watching that. And um, yeah, so I, like I said, I edited that, I think I edited that together in about eight to, to 10 hours, eight to 12 hours. That's when I felt, realized I was in love with editing. I loved editing. Um, so that was, uh, I, I liked that just about as much as directing because directing always been my thing. Realized I was a writer because I always wanted to direct things I wrote. But editing was a surprise. And, um, and when I showed this uh, film to my uh, uh, friend and now girlfriend later, uh, one of the first things she said is, "You're a great editor." Now, I'm not. I'm not trying to like pat myself on the back here. I just had never had anybody tell me that I was a good editor, and it affected me because I realized, you know, we've heard before. You hear how important editing is, how it can make or break a film. So, anyway, uh, that's my. It was my short film. Got into a New York film festival, flew out there and shot. And that moment, I really felt like God, I'm a filmmaker. Then I ran into some medical issues and had to step away from film. But I had that moment, and I had that film, and I have that film. So I'm really thankful for it. Move on to the next part of the this episode now. This second part of our episode, um, I'll be talking, uh, doing a quick review of Ford versus Ferrari and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, there are films that I call uh, filmmaker films. And what I mean by that is like, I, as a filmmaker, you know, I, get, I am in awe of it and I am, uh, you know, let me break it up a little bit more. So like, look at a Spielberg, okay, Spielberg, he makes movies and he makes films. I mean, that's just how I'm breaking them down. Like Jurassic Park is a movie, you know, eating the popcorn, it's an experience. It's, um, to me, I think of it as a movie. Um, whereas like Amistad, which is one of my favorite films, to me, that's like a film. It seemed like, and I'm not sure about this, but I think I've heard Spielberg would make these blockbusters, make a bunch of money, use that to make the films that, you know, the films that he wanted to actually uh, do messages or whatever. And then there's something I call, like I said, filmmakers' films, where I, I don't know how else to put it. I, I would I would tell another filmmaker, you should see this. Um, and there were a couple of these last year, in the last year. Uh, for and Ford versus Ferrari. When I saw the previews for Ford versus Ferrari, it looked like a filmmaker's film. It looked like it reminded me. I'm 51, so it reminded me of the way films used to be made and Lois used to look. And I didn't see it in a theater, but I did see it on a big TV, and it uh, was absolutely awesome. In fact, we own it and I've watched it several times. Um, first of all, Matt Damon um, is one of my favorite actors uh, ever since uh, Good Will Hunting. And um, he, he's, he started, he's done some other movies, he's done some, as he's gotten older, I feel like he's kind of done some middle-aged kind of characters and I don't think that's necessary with him. Some people are timeless. Uh, and I'm glad to have seen him in Ford vs. Ferrari because once again, he was just a timeless character. Anyway, Matt Damon uh, does a, an amazing uh, job in this film. This film is, is several things about this film. The cinematography is, is amazing, especially because the cars, all, all, the, all the driving scenes, all the races, these cars to me are amazing looking. They're, you know, they're, they're race cars from the 60s and they just, you know, they have uh, a phenomenal shape and obviously they're heavier. Um, but to watch the race scenes alone, you should see this film. But Matt Damon's performance, you should see this. And of course, Christian Bale, who completely becomes the character, you should see it just for him. So just two thumbs up, way up on Ford and Ferrari, especially if you're a filmmaker, but even if you're not, um, I recommend these, this movie extremely. Going, we're jumping over now to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, I was wondering if this would be a filmmaker's film. Tarantino um, is a master at what he does. Uh, granted, there's some of his earlier films that I didn't even see, I, I, I'm not super, I don't like a lot of violence, and um, 
but th there's filmmakers can do it in a way where you're able to watch it and then there was some violence in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood probably in a different way that I didn't think I'd be able to watch but because the filmmaking was so good I was able to watch it um, maybe I could cover my eyes a little bit because I don't like all those visuals getting in there and affecting me when I sleep no but anyway um this is another case of Tarantino doing a masterpiece First of all, Brad Pitt is one of my favorites. He's currently my favorite actor. Um, he's been one of my favorites for a very long time. Um, so some of these good looking actors uh, t tend to, people think of them that way. And when in my, I've seen Brad Pitt since Cool World, which is way back, you can check that out. And ever since I saw his performance in that, I've been a fan. And I know he's done a couple, uh, a couple movies where uh, he became popular because his shirt was off. But um, anyway, um, he, uh, his performance was phenomenal in this. And there was a scene where he's driving in his little, I think it's a Carmagia, his old Volkswagen, just cruising through this street. I won't go, go any more than that. It's probably my favorite scene in the whole movie. Uh, you'll, you'll see it if you see the movie. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio is a whole other story than Brad Pitt. Leonardo DiCaprio is a sharpshooter. Um, uh, he's a phenomenal actor, he always has been. Um, but like in this movie, there's like one scene in particular where I'm just like, wow. Um, he plays an, an old actor that's kind of, um, his career is kind of fading. Uh, but he's filming a scene, he has a little girl in the scene with him, you know, that's all I'll tell you in that scene in particular. Um, his acting in that uh, was, just blew me away. Um, but the overall filmmaking itself, Tarantino's film is a masterpiece and he did some things that he does with uh, some of his creative liberties. The things that are going on are based on re real things that happened. And then, uh, then you have these fictional characters uh, in the mix. So check those two movies out. Filmmakers films have to see him and tell my brother to see him. And he still hasn't. I can't believe he's not seen either of them. Um, and uh, but you need to. And I would highly recommend them. In this third part uh, and final part of uh, this episode, um, I'm going to talk about a character. Um, character is Gen Yu from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, one of my favorite films. Um, and the actress is Zi Zhang. This character is, uh, first of all, the actress is extraordinary. Um, and I love the story. I love a lot of things about Crouching Tiger. I won't get into Crouching Tiger. But I will say this. What Jen, uh, what, Ze, what, what Jen Yu to me uh, came across is a character that's, whose soul is poisoned. Um, and it's, that's a powerful thing. I don't see an actress at all when I watch this. I see a girl whose soul has been poisoned, has been tainted. And the, the main uh, priest character tries to help her, uh, bring her around, you know, a, a train her and um, pull her away. From, but I feel that she's, un, she's unchangeable. She's, been, she's in too much pain. And you can see so much pain in her eyes. There's so many scenes you can just, if you just heard the pain in her eyes, and um, that character to me was amazing. And like I said, the, the idea that you could just see this amazing priest trying to help her and save her soul and even, you know, at the expense of his own life, spoilers, um, could not bring this girl around. Um, and um, I just think that that's a masterful character. Um, you could see, you know, the good in her, but it didn't matter. Um, so this, this is an, also a case of a very strong female characters, uh, and, and I've written some novellas and I've written some stories, and I, I do tend to write about strong female characters, not always, um, but they, they're, they have been in several of my, the things that I've written. Um, maybe it's because I had a, a single mom that was, uh, that I admired. I don't know. <laughs> um, and then, uh, also when I wrote my, uh, first draft of the screenplay, in 2000 of White Jade. Now that takes place in Japan, uh, whereas this actress is uh, Chinese, I believe. Um, oh, there's another thing. Uh, I will say this about Crouching Tiger. Um, I did not see it in a theater, which just sucks. But when I did see it, I saw it in Mandarin with subtitles and it was masterful. Years later, I saw it and it was subtitled. I mean, I sorry, and it had dubbing and it just obliterated it for me. I couldn't even believe it, how much worse the film to me was in English, so I don't know if most people in America saw it with the dub with the dubbing. I, they probably did, which is just. I am so glad I saw the Mandarin version first. Uh, and you, if you haven't seen the Mandarin version with the subtitles, watch this movie again. It may impact you more than it did before. That's the end of this second episode of I Filmmaker. I hope you enjoyed it. 
and uh, I'm trying to do these weekly. This is uh, this is my second week, and I will also put the link down there to the first episode uh, if you'd like to check that out. And it's more of a kind of introductory episode, but it has some stuff. And then um, I will uh, see you on Twitter, and I will see you next week.